الركن الاول القيام مع القدره، لابد من القيام في صلاه الفريضه، نعم. القيام في صلاه الفريضه ركن من اركان الصلاه، نعم. نشح الركن الركن هذا البناء الان له اركان اربعه. لو اسقطنا ركن من هذه الاركان الاربعه انهار البناء. فالصلاه لها اركان. لو نسقط ركن واحد من هذه الاركان اصبحت الصلاه عندنا باطله لا تصح. ولا يقبل في ترك الركن لا جهل ولا نسيان ولا عمد سيأتي معنا بإذن الله تعالى نعم So a ركن is a, pil- uh, a pillar For example now this whole of this building It has four pillars If one of these four pillars were to be destroyed Then the whole building would come down And this is like the prayer In the prayer there are certain actions Which are considered as being a pillar of the prayer If one of these actions are not there Or they are missing Then the whole prayer is not uh, accepted or correct And therefore The arkan of the prayer are الركن الأول القيام في صلاة الفريضة لكن مع القدرة على القيام نعم So the first pillar is that a person prays standing up as long as he has the ability to pray standing up and this is only in the obligatory prayers it's a pillar in the obligatory prayers فكيف نعرف أنه قادر أو غير قادر على القيام So how do we know whether a person has the ability to stand up in the obligatory prayers or he doesn't have the ability لا يقدر على القيام بالكلية كأن يكون نسأل الله العافية والسلامة مشلول مثلا فهذا لا يقدر على القيام بالكلية نعم if, if we have a person who is for example paralyzed and he isn't able to stand up at all أو يقول أنا أقدر على القيام لكن يحصل لي ألم شديد ولا اخشع في صلاتي فهذا غير قادر على القيام يصلي جالسا نعم and also there is another person who does have the ability to stand up but he says that if i stand up it's very painful for me it's very hard for me and when i stand up i'm not able to concentrate in my prayer again this type of person we say that he doesn't have the, uh, the ability to stand up and pray لكن البعض يقول انا اقدر على شيء من القيام نقول لا بد أن تقوم هذا الذي تقدر عليه ومتى جاء على متعب اجلس نعم and other people they say that I'm able to stand up for a short while but they, then when I prolong this standing it starts to hurt me or I get pain so we say to this person that as long as you are able to stand up then you should stand and this is the obligation this is the pillar however as soon as the pain starts setting in then you sit down وهذا نرى اليوم في من يصلي على الكراسي تجده ما شاء الله ياتي سيرا على الاقدام الى المسجد ثم ياتي وضع الكرسي ويجلس ثم بعد هذا يكبر تكبيره الحرام هذا خطا نعم. We see some people that they come walking to the masjid and then they pick the chair up and they take it to the front and they place it place the chair and then when it comes for the time of the prayer they sit down and then they say the takbirat al-ihram they begin the prayer so this is incorrect نقول له الاصل ان تقوم متى جاء التعب جاء الالم اجلس زال الالم ترجع وتقوم على هذا نعم so we say to this person that the obligation upon you the pillar of the prayer for you is that you have to stand up when you start feeling pain then you sit down Once this pain goes, then you stand up again. أما النافلة يصح أن يصلي النافلة جالسا لكن له نصف أجر القائم. نعم. And as for the voluntary prayers, the nawafil, then it's permitted for a person to pray them while sitting down. However, if he prays them sitting down, then his reward is half of the person who prayed them standing up. نعم. بعد القيام مع القدرة تكبيرة الإحرام. نعم. And then after Uh, standing up and praying if he has the ability to do so then the next pillar of the prayer is takbirat al-ihram i.e. the first takbirat the first time you say Allahu Akbar takbirat al-ihram huwa qawl Allahu Akbar wa qad yadun ba'ad al-nas anna takbirat al-ihram hiya ayfa raf'a al-yadun raf'a al-yadun yu shay wa qawl Allahu Akbar shay akha naam takbirat al-ihram is the first instance a person says Allahu Akbar when starting the prayer Some people think that takbirat al-ihram means a person raising his hands. Rather, a person raising his hands and a person saying Allahu Akbar and takbirat al-ihram, they're two different things. ثم بعدها قراءة الفاتحة. 
And then after this, the next pillar is a person reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. فَلَا بُدْ مِنْ قَرَحَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ So a person has to recite Surah Al-Fatiha. كَامِلَةً All of it, completely. مُرَتَّبًا In its right order. بِآيَاتِهَا With all of its ayat. وَكَلِمَاتِهَا And all of its words. وَحْرُوفِهَا And all of its letters. وَحَرَكَاتِهَا And even all of its vowels. لَوْ تَرَكِ مِنْهَا حَرْفُ وَاحِدَ أَوْ حَرَكَ وَاحِدَ فَالصَّلَى بَاطِنَا If a person leaves even one word of Surah Al-Fatiha, or he doesn't recite one vowel of Surah Al-Fatiha, then his prayer is invalid and not accepted. And a person has to recite Surah Al-Fatiha in every single unit of the prayer. في السرية وفي الجهرية وفي الحضر وفي السفر. Whether this prayer is or from the quiet prayers or the loud prayers or he's traveling or he's resident, he has to recite Surah Al-Fatiha in every single rak'ah. ولا تسقط الفاتحة بأي حال من الأحوال إلا في حالة واحدة فقط. And the obligation to recite Surah Al-Fatiha as a pillar of the prayer. Then this obligation is not removed in any instance except from one, except in one exception. إذا دخل إلى المسجد وجد الإمام راكعا يكبر تكبيرة الإحرام ثم يكبر تكبيرة الركوع وإذا رفع الإمام الركوع تسقط عنه الفاتحة وتحسب له هذه الركعة. نعم. So the only exception in which a person does not have to recite the Surah Al-Fatiha is when a person comes late to the prayer, he comes late to the prayer and he sees the Imam, he's already in ruku, in bowing. So he says, Allahu Akbar, for his takbirat al-ihram. And then he says, Allahu Akbar, and he goes down to bowing straight away. As long as he catches the ruku, the bowing of the Imam, then he has caught the whole rak'ah, the whole unit of the prayer. وَلَوْ أَدْرَكَ الْإِمَامْ رَاكِعًا وَكَبَّرْ تَكْبِيرًا وَاحِدًا وَنَوَى بِهَا تَكْبِيرًا تَلْإِحْرَامًا فَالصَّلَاةَ صَحِيحًا نَوَى بِهَا تَكْبِيرًا تَلْرُكُوع لم يدخل في الصلاة أصلاً في الصلاة باطلة نعم. and if a person comes late to he comes late to the prayer and he finds the imam in ruku in bowing and he says Allahu Akbar but when he says Allahu Akbar he didn't intend the first Allah with the first takbir of al-ihram but rather he intended in his mind that this is the takbir of going into bowing then here he hasn't even entered into the prayer and therefore his prayer is not accepted. ثم بعد هذا الركوع، and then the next pillar after this is the ركوع is the bowing. ثم الاعتدال والرفع من الركوع، and then the next pillar of the prayer is الاعتدال which is when a person stands up he stands up fully and properly. ثم السجود على الأعضاء السبعة، and then a per then the next pillar is a person going into prostration and making sujud upon his seven limbs. الجبهة والأنف. And the seven limbs are the forehead and the nose, وباطن الكفين, and the palms of the two hands, والركبتين, and the two knees, وباطن أصابع الرجلين, and the bottommost parts of the toes. All these are the seven limbs that a person must prostrate upon. السجدة الأولى والسجدة الثانية, and a person has to prostrate the first prostration and the second prostration, the first sujud and the second sujud. ثم الجلسة بين السجدتين. And also, from the pillars of the prayer is the sitting between the two sujoods. ثم التغطيب بين الأركان لا بد أن نرتب ويصلي الصلاة مرتبة. And then the next pillar is for a person to perform all these actions in the correct or in the correct sequence. ولا بد من الطمأنينة في جميع الأركان. أن الطمأنينة هو أن يطمئن في ركوع وفي سجود وفي قيام وفي كل الأركان. وتتحقق الطمأنينة بل يأتي بالذكر الواجب في كل ركن من الأركان فلو قال مثلا في ركوع سبحان ربي العظيم في الغالب المحقق الطمأنينة في السجود قال مرة واحدة سبحان ربي الأعلى في الغالب حقق الطمأنينة نعم And then the next pillar is الطمأنينة Tranquility I am a person being tranquil and calm in his prayer And the meaning of tranquility or the meaning of الطمأنينة is that in every part of the prayer, whether it's the ruku or the sujood or any part of the prayer, the person says completely and perfectly that which he should say. As an example, if the person is bowing and he says, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, 
and he says it perfectly and completely, then this is tamaanina, this is tranquility. Now, ثم التشهد الأخير أي قراءة التشهد الأخير قول التحيات لله الآخر. Now, and then the last pillar, or, or and then another pillar of the prayer is is the final tashahud, meaning he's saying التحيات لله. التشهد الأخير أي التشهد الذي يليه تسليم من الصلاة. Now. And the meaning of the final tashahud is the final tashahud which is before the taslim. والجلوس له لأنه قد يقرأ التشهد وهو قائم أو راكع أو ساجد. And also from the pillars of the prayer is sitting for the last tashahud because a person might stand up and recite the tashahud. So he has to sit and recite the tashahud. والصلاة على النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى الصلاة الإبراهيمية. And also from the pillars of the prayer is a person sending salutations and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon the way of Ibrahim. I.e. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad and that which you know. Now, wa taslim al-awla wa taslim al-thani. And then, the final pillar of the prayer is for a person to make the first taslim and the second taslim. Ala ma ta'allaq wa Allahu a'lam bi arkan al-sara. So this is what relates to the pillars of the prayer and the law was best. Wa ajibat al-sara. The obligations, the wajibat, the obligations of the prayer. Wajibat al-salah, jami' al-takbirat ala takbirat al-ihram. So, the obligations or the obligatory matters in the prayer which a person has to do are all of the takbirat except the first takbirat. مثلا, takbirat al-rukur, takbirat al-sujud, takbirat al-rafa min al-sujud, kul takbirat al-salah ala takbirat al-ihram, فهذه التكبيرات ركن من أركان الصلاة والتكبيرة الإحرام كما ذكرنا ركن جميع التكبيرات من واجبات الصلاة أما تكبيرة الإحرام فهي ركن من أركان الصلاة نعم. So for example a person saying الله أكبر when bowing a person saying الله أكبر when going down into sujud a person saying الله أكبر when standing up from the sujud so every time a person has to say الله أكبر then this is an obligation. This is the, from the wajibat of the prayer. As for the first takbirah, then as mentioned, this is a rukan, a pillar from the pillars of the prayer. قول سبحان رب العظيم في ركوعي مرة واحدة على النواجبات الصلاة. And from the obligations of the prayer is for a person to say سبحان رب العظيم at least once in his ركوع, in his bowing. إذا لابد من قول سبحان ربي العظيم مرة واحدة في ركوع. and therefore a person has to say سبحان ربي العظيم at least once in his bowing in his ركوع. ويستحب له أن يزيد بما ورد عن النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام المرة الثانية سبحان ربي العظيم أو سبحان قدوس رب الملائكة والروح أو سبحانك اللهم ربنا بحمدك اللهم فيد المهم لا بد أن يقول مرة واحدة سبحان ربي العظيم في ركوع. And then after this, a person can say the extra additional supplications or remembrances that came from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But at the least, he has to say one time, Subhana Rabbiyal Azim, in his bowing, in his ruku.